You it is good you it's your boys I'm back here with another video and in this video today guys we're gonna be building a squad for 100,000 MT now with the way the player market works this year things are a little bit different as well as we do have a bunch of free cards in my team that you guys can specifically grind for now i'm not going to be looking uh, at the free cards I'm not going to be just plugging in any of them or ruby or above because basically if you have 100,000 mt you limit yourself to sapphire or lower so basically another way to look at this is a sapphire and lower squad or if you're just starting the game a squad that you can go out there and have some success with we're going to start it off at the starting point guard position and as we do dive into that guys if you're new to the channel and have not yet make sure you guys do smash that subscribe button as we're on the road towards 130 thousand subscribers now here's the deal with gary payton when you go and look at gary payton you can get this card for free all you got to do is get five steals over multiple games so you could honestly go into your collection and this card could just be sitting there now let me tell you guys something about gary payton this card is absolutely outstanding defensively especially offensively i mean is he great? Is he the best point guard in the game? No, because he is release is not great, but he can move decently. He's 6'4". He plays immaculate defense. What more can you ask for out of GP Gary Payton? Not much. When it comes down to like point guards for salary cap, he is definitely a card I'd look at as well, just for the sole fact of he's good, he's gritty defensively, and he can compete at a high level. The one thing is he's, you know, pretty expensive in salary cap as, as kind of expected because he is absolutely elite at that sapphire tier at the shooting guard position we're plugging in emerald raja bell when you go back and look at the dunktober set there are two really great budget options and both of them are going to be in my starting line let's start off with this with raja bell what can this card not do on the court I don't know you tell me this card can do everything on the court six five six eight wingspan shoots the ball incredibly plays really solid defense for a shooting guard release i don't know if i love it maybe kind of troll but the rudy upper is really solid kyrie irving dribble style as well he can be an absolute bucket getter and the one thing i love about rajabell is you know he's going to shoot lights out that's the one thing about it 85 three ball hot spots from both corners he is going to be able to knock down shots at an elite level no no there's really no debate here raja bell would have the best overall budget cards in my team at the starting small four position this one should, should surprise absolutely nobody we're plugging in emerald robert covington 6772 wingspan i don't know why 2k decided to give robert covington an 86 three ball but you're giving somebody like robert covington with a very easy to time release an 86 three ball decent enough shooting badges and if you look at his defense it's really solid now a lot of people are going to be like oh Ty, but he's only got 74 speed acceleration he's not that fast not that quick and my kind of argument to me to that would be you know what you're right you're right he's not the fastest card in my team but what he is he's got a great player model he's gonna move his feet he's gonna knock down shots and he can get paint stops as well one of the most complete small forwards in the entire game not even talking about budget cards is robert covington a steal for 7000 mt power four position we are plugging in an old reliable here in jordan walsh at the time i'm recording this 46 100 mt i had to change it because i had him slated in here at 6000 at this stage he's 4600 mt now can you still grind for this jordan wash i do believe you can like there's still two days left in which you can grind out jordan wash all you got to do is uh, score 25 points or more with a celtics player in a game so really easy challenge to get done 74 three ball 77 speed very good defense he's really similar to robert covington difference is robert covington's gonna have a way higher three ball wash is gonna be a little bit faster covington's probably got the better player model player but the malik beasley base on normal timing is not only super easy to time it is decently quick as well i mean when i've used jordan walsh I've always thought to myself that he has one of the best releases in my team. Just for like a standstill catch and shoot guy. Is it the quickest release in the game? No, but it is straight up and down, super easy to time, super easy to green. Jordan Walsh coming in at my starting power forward position. As my starting center, we're going to try somebody out here in Arvidas Sabonis. Now, I've not used Arvidas Sabonis yet in my team. So that has to be the first thing I tell you guys. But do I like what he provides? I don't like it. I love it. 7'3", 7'6", wingspan. Can shoot the ball decent. 
Sure, his speed's not great. His ladder quickness isn't great. But an 84 interior, 84 strength. Do I think he can still get bullied by the Shaqs, the Wilts of the world? Absolutely. I don't think there's anybody that's going to sit there and, and stick up for Arvidas when it comes down to that. But do I think offensively he provides something that a lot of centers can't? Absolutely. I mean, a 74 three ball, you're going to have to at least respect it. Now, I know his release is kind of trolled because he does have the Kyle Anderson upper. I agree with you guys. That is going to be a little bit of a downside. But if you're just starting a team right now, you got to realize Arvidas bonus is 7-3. He can shoot the ball. He's got a wide player amount of player build. Yes, he's going to get extremely tired with his player build and his stamina being, being pretty low, but... Arvidas Sabonis can do a little bit of everything on the court. Definitely a budget big. I recommend you guys picking up. So in my starters, you're looking right at 46,000 MT. Heading to my bench unit. We're starting off with Nick Van Exel at the backup point guard position. Now I'm already gonna I'm already gonna spoil things. We're running James Posey with him. Now, where is James Posey gonna be lined uh, a up in the squad? We'll get to that eventually. Van Exel right now, 6,000 MT, 83 three ball. Perimeter defense goes way up. Lateral quickness goes way up. Still defensively, he's undersized. I 100% I agree. He's gonna struggle defensively, but he gets a lot more badges to help him out. Release wise, really solid. Dame dribble style. He's just a point guard that you can trust out there to create his own shot occasionally and just hold it down at least decent enough on the defensive end of the court. Not going to be the best defensive player in my team, but when it comes down to Nick Van Exel, I've used him so much in salary cap, and I really have enjoyed using him. At the shooting guard position, a new card, a card that came out, what, on Friday? Sapphire Aaron Aflalo, 6'5", 6'8", wingspan. Now, let's start with his hot spots. Hot spots from four out of five places around the arc. 83 three ball, 80 speed, defensively really solid. Now, you might look at his defense, and think, wow, Ty, those are really mediocre stats. Look at the important ones. 78 perimeter, 78 lateral quickness. That is not that bad. I mean, I promise you, that's not that bad. You can get a lot worse than that. He is really a 3 and D guy in my team. That is what Aaron Afalo is. That is what he's going to give you. D-Rob base, obviously, I, I've not used it, but I do think that's going to be solid enough. Normal, leaner, pro dribble style. He's not going to be your primary boy another, but he's going to knock down shots, play good defense, and at the shooting guard position, that's all you need on the court. Aaron Afalo, my backup shooting guard. At the small forward position, we're plugging in Trevor Ariza, 6'8", 7'2", wingspan. Another guess what, guys? 3 and D type player in my team. 6'8", good size, 83 ball, 79 speed, really solid lateral quickness, perimeter defense, silver catch and shoot. Trevor Ariza base is just fine. Pro 3 leaner. I, again, as far as leaners are concerned right now, I'm not really that in tune to them. Uh, but overall, Trevor Reza, hot spots from both corners. That's where he's going to be spending a lot of his time, just sitting in a corner. And if he gets an open look, he is going to be a straight cat. Should never miss with Mr. Trevor Reza. From top to bottom, I think the pros of Trevor Reza outweigh the cons. And when I look at this card, he is a card that you guys can add to your squad at that small four position and just have a ton of success with him. Very similar to a guy like Robert Covington and just a three and d small forward and that means james posey has to hold it down at the power forward position now with the duo i think he can without the duo i think he's going to struggle now let's look at why with the duo i think he can hold it down at the power forward position he's 6 8 he gets an 88 three ball speed goes up acceleration goes up interior goes up 10 perimeter obviously goes up lateral quickness goes up block goes up 20 rebounding goes up exponentially he gets high he gets gold rebound chaser which at the power four position is huge chase down his pogo stick gets a ton of badges in general now why do i like the card overall not just at the power four position his badges get way better and and this is only this only tells part of the story right because on, on actually in game he's gonna have more total badges and his stats get so much better this is probably my favorite duo as it stands in my team right now is the James Posey as well as Nick Van Exel duo. You're giving James Posey an 88 three ball. The card should really never miss 88 three ball, gold catch and shoot corner specialist. I'm telling you guys right now, I love the duo and had to find a way to incorporate it in this squad builder. At the center position, this one might come as a surprise to a lot of you guys. Sapphire Marcus Camby. Yes, Marcus Camby. 6'11", 7'2", wingspan. The 63 three ball. 
Do I love it? No. Does he have potential to knock down shots for you guys? Yes. Again, I don't love it. I'm not calling him a stretch big, but has potential to knock down shots. 60 speed, 75 lateral quickness, 90 interior, 87 block, 85 strength, great interior defensive badges. One of the most underrated cards in the entire game is Sapphire Marcus Camby. And it's crazy to say, because I never thought I'd be hyping up a Marcus Camby card in my team, but that's the truth. That's how good Marcus Camby is in my team. A card I definitely will always stick up for in general. I mean, again, you want a card that can compete against the best bigs in my team. Marcus Camby can do that at the highest level. Definitely a card you got to include in your lineup. Now, when it comes down to the total I spent, I think it was like 102. 2000 MT, so maybe went a little overboard or overpriced. But I do think the way you have to go about doing this is look sapphire and lower, and then look, do any duos help me out? You can make your adjustments again, plug in free cards with where you got them. If you've got free Clyde, free Draymond, heck, plug those guys in. If you've got Chris Bosch, plug him right in this squad as well. This is just my overall 100k squad builder with some very solid budget options. Drop a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.